So in 1997, I came to the Barbados Community College and met Mr. Keith Yard. And we worked together at the college, but I was so moved and so, so moved by his musicality and as I said, his energy and his enthusiasm. That when I decided to record some of my music, he was the lone tenor that I asked to join us, to join us in the project. Um, I had just eight voices at the time, and Keith would travel all the way to St. Philip to, I had only eight voices because I could only fit eight persons in my music room, and we would rehearse. And if you get a chance to, to listen to any of the recordings that we would have done, um, he, as I said, is the lone tenor on these recordings. I'm Roger Gittins, and as I said, I had much pleasure making music with him. We are a few more than eight voices today, and we would like to bring a tribute on our behalf, Roger Gittins, and we've grown to 10 voices. I believe we have nine today, and this is one of the songs that Mr. Yard would have sung on and would have recorded, would have worked with us in the studio and kept our spirits up with his lovely voice and attitude. So this is Psalm 121 in memory of Mr. Keith Yard, better known as Colonel.
Our next tribute comes from Brother Richard Hope, who was organist at this church for a number of years. Mr. Hope is going to pay a tribute to Mr. Yard in some evangelical and an evangelical medley. As you know, Mr. Yard was also very much associated with the church army of this church. So our next tribute comes from Brother Richard Hope.
Our next tribute will come from Mr. John Burnett, our organization choir master of the Christ Church Parish Church, and he'll be accompanied by Brother Christopher Boyce from St. Barnabas Church. Following the tribute on flute, we'll have a tribute on saxophone by Mr. M. Ricky Niles, who was, a, who was a member of the Sicilian Chorale, and he would have sung in the chorale with Mr. Yarder's director.
Our next tribute comes from the Sicilian Chorale. The Sicilian Chorale would have been formed out of the Sicilian singers. The Sicilian singers, you know, would have been the, formed by Doris Provençal, and she also would have left the legacy of the Sicilian Chorale. Uh, Mr. Yard directed the chorale in, the, in his very, very formative years, and we enjoyed a great rapport with him. And uh, our tribute to him this evening is one of the songs that he would have sung over several years on tours to North America, Canada, uh, Wales, all those places. Mr. Yard would have been prominent in this song that we will sing for you. I hear a voice of praying. Now we have a tribute on the organ by Mr. John Brand. Mr. John Brand has been um, connected to this church for a, a long while, from a boy. And Mr. Yard we've had a lot of interaction with him. And John, without hesitation, consented to be here this evening. So John may know there for us.
All right, and our final tribute will come from Amanda Fields. Last night I lay a sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the two.
anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. Father, whether we live or whether we die to the Lord. For this I am Christ Christ in the name. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me shall not perish, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He brought nothing to this world that we contain nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath, of the everlasting arms. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Keith for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, remember before this day our brother Keith. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and to love his companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life. So in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have now words of remembrance by Keith Andrew Yard. The conductor stood with baton raised, his charges to prepare, with one swift flourish of his hand, sweet music filled the air. Father Mark, family members, friends, I wish to thank all of you, both physically present and joining online for coming together to share in the celebration of my father's life. I wish also to thank all those who paid tribute in music today. I would further like to express my gratitude by sharing with you some of the notes that I believe made the melody and informed the tempo of his life. Dad was, above all, a family man. He was immensely proud of his four sons, and he loved us dearly. He taught us to be kind to each other and to look out for each other. He admonished us not even to call each other names, often quoting a part of Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, Whoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Dad loved his siblings, my Aunt Althea and Uncle Claude, and was always concerned with their well-being. 
in previous times asking me to ensure that his passport and U.S. visa were renewed in case he should need to travel to the United States in support of his sister or brother. He cared deeply for his nephews and nieces, and he adored his grandchildren. He was the keeper of family records and had a list of everyone's birthday. As the patriarch of our family, Dad was our sage, dispensing his wisdom when it was solicited, but never attempting to impose his will on the adults in the family. He might say, I will tell you what I think, but the choice is up to you. Dad was a man of discipline. He spent his youthful days in the Church Lads Brigade and later joined the Barbados Cadet Corps while a student at Combermere. He went on to be a member of the Barbados Regiment Band and ultimately joined the British Army, serving in the Royal Army Medical Corps. The innate discipline that Dad further refined through his membership in these organizations was reflected in all aspects of his life. Several years ago, for example, when he decided to monitor his diet more closely, he immediately cut out several Bajan delicacies which he had previously enjoyed. These included fish cakes, conkeys, macaroni pie, ham, and others. Having quit cold turkey, he was not tempted to partake of even small amounts of these items. Little wonder then that he maintained an enviably flat stomach throughout his life. Anyone who wished to see the epitome of calm needed only to observe dad's approach to life. In musical terms, his life would have been marked and Dante. Rarely hurried and never flustered, dad taught us that panic and ill-considered rushing only added to one's problems, but never solved them. No matter what challenge he faced, he believed that a solution could be found. One of his favorite sayings was, nothing beats the power of prayer. He trusted the divine maker to guide him through the vagaries of life and in the face of adversity, his advice would always be, pray without ceasing. I am sure that the many persons who attended Sunday school here during the many years that dad served as Sunday school superintendent would have heard him say this. I cannot think of a more mild-mannered person than my father. We often say that manners maketh man, but dad lived it. Just about everyone I speak to says of him, your father was a gentleman. The way he interacted with others clearly left a positive impression on them, even to the extent that we, his sons, benefited just by association. A few months ago, I was speaking to a family friend who had worked with dad many years ago. As I assessed an item that friend owned, I made a comment about its condition only to realize subsequently that my comment was based on incomplete information. 
I hastened to apologize, explaining that I had meant no offense, but was immediately shushed with the comment, you could never mean to offend. After all, you're a key son. Such was the measure of the man. It is not by accident that I have left until last the thing that dad was perhaps best known for, his love of music. Music was his life. It was impossible to grow up in our home without gaining an appreciation for an eclectic range of music, from calypso to classical, reggae to ragtime, soul to salsa. Music was a constant feature in our home. As a youngster, dad was taught by his father to sight read music using the tonic solfa system. He further followed his father's example by joining the St. Barnabas Choir at age nine and remaining a member for almost 70 years, missing only the few years he spent living abroad. For nearly half of those many decades, dad served as a director of the church choirs and he was really touched by the appreciation shown for his years of service when he retired from this role in 2016. Around that same time, Dad also retired as conductor of the Sicilian Chorale, a role for which he had been recommended by the late Doris Provencal. It would take more time than we have available here to list all of the choirs with which Dad was associated. Apart from the St. Barnabas choirs and the Sicilians, Dad sang with the Barclay Singers in the 1970s. He trained and conducted the choir of the Barbados Community College for almost 30 years. He assisted the choir of the St. George Parish Church and helped the Mother's Union and Church Army and many others here at St. Barnabas prepare for any concerts or musical presentations they might have. It never ceased to amaze me how he could listen to a 25 voice choir and notice that one alto was a little sharp. Neither did his prodigious talent make him arrogant or imperious. For all his musical ability, dad remained humble, always expressing genuine surprise at any praise that he was given. He would work with any group that sought his assistance, his aim always being to help them deliver to the best of their ability. To me, dad personified the words of Rudyard Kipling, if you can talk with crowds nor lose your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. I believe that many of you know dad had the gift of gab and frequently found ways to make a short story long. Some of you might even be beginning to think like father, like son. <laughs> so let me simply say that dad would have been honored to receive today's tributes. And this leaves me only to give you the final bars of this melody and leave you with what I think dad would say to us now. Do not lament that I am gone. Let eyes shed not a tear. But 
when you would remember me, let music fill the air. Thank you. We now stand and sing the hymn 363, Angel Voices Ever Singing. Almighty God, remember before you today your servant Keith. I pray that having opened to him the gates of a larger life, you will receive him more and more into a joyful service. With all who have served you in the past, he may share in eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first Bible reading. First lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, beginning at verse 2. 
and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these things are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the first of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The word of the Lord. Verses 1 to 13.
reading of the word of God in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I, that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way, the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord.
You know, stand and sing the hymn 186, Ye Choirs of New Jerusalem. I speak in the name of God. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Words taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 15. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Then the angels, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place. Let me first of all, on behalf of the parish family, extend to the sons, other family members, our deepest condolences to you as we gather with you to give thanks for the life of Keith Colonel Yard and to share in your mourning but also to be grateful to have this opportunity to give thanks 
for someone, of course, who was very much a part of our lives in terms of the ministry here for many, many years. We heard from Keith, his son, about his contribution in the area of music. But therefore, we want to extend to you our deepest condolences. We also remember family members who are overseas and uh, also to indicate that um, Father Bernard Griffith had said to me that he would like you to know of his continual support and prayers. Another uh, priest, and of course we have Reverend Audrey with us um, this, this morning, this e yeah, it's evening, yeah, evening. Um, Keith passed away on December the 17th, which is my father's birthday, and he wanted also to extend his condolences. Um, someone, of course, that they went to common mirror together, and that was a, a constant um, statement that he would make about him. But the fact of Keith's passing, though, for me, only sunk in, really sunk in, on Christmas Day. It was on Christmas Day when, of course, we heard those familiar hymns, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and O Come, All Ye Faithful. And of course, in O Come, All Ye Faithful, it sings, Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation, sing, all you citizens of heaven above, glory to God in the highest. And of course, we know about the descants uh, associated with those two hymns. And it was then, it was then, for me, that it really sunk in that Keith is no longer with us. Because, of course, we would know that Christmas is a time of singing. And Keith has very much been a part of leading the singing, generally speaking, of various choirs, but particularly here at St. Barnabas to lead us the swinging of, during those very high festivals, important festivals, as we sing glory to God who is in the highest. And therefore, I want us to reflect upon that aspect of Keith's ministry, to lead us in the worship of God and to lead us to use the words from heart the herald angels sing and sing choirs of angels and to see his ministry as one of those who are called to be angels. Now usually when persons speak about angels, we see about angels in the conventional sense of someone who is spotless, someone who is perfect, someone who is without sin. And therefore, when we describe some person in less than flattering terms, we say, well, that person is no angel. That person is no angel. And for those who sing in choirs, you will know that we are no angels. And I can say that, first of all, I begin for myself, as I started in a choir when I was eight years old. And even though I may have looked like an angel, <laughs> singing sweetly like an angel, I definitely was not an angel in the conventional sense, behave yourself, in the conventional sense. And I don't think Keith would have associated himself as an angel in the conventional sense, because we will know those persons who have been involved in any kind of ministry of singing, we sing out the best in us, but also sometimes the best, the worst comes in us in terms of frustrating, frustration when we're not able to do what we wish to do. And this comes out not only in terms of our ministry, in terms of a piece that we have to go through time and time again, but it must be said that also those persons who lead us will sometimes bring out the worst in us. We are not angels. We are not angels. But we are called upon, though, to know that being an angel, though, is not really what it is all about. Because even though, yes, Angels are often seen as spotless and perfect. It is said in that beautiful children's hymn, there's a song for little children above the bright blue sky, a song that will not weary, though sung continually, a song which even angels can never, ever sing. They know not Christ as Savior, but worship him as King. We're not angels in the conventional sense, because even though angels we may see up here, they do not see, have not had a relationship with Jesus as their savior. 
So we have to see that angels really and truly are looking to us. And therefore, in terms of Keith and his ministry, for all those persons who are involved in singing, we have to see not angels in the conventional sense of being perfect, but seeing angels for us who need salvation. And also, though, to see angels as we can be act as angels, not perfect, but to see angels as a biblical sense as those persons who are messengers, who bring the good news. And we can bring the good news in various ways. As we heard in Luke, the angels, with the choir of angels, were able to share the good news of a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And therefore, I want us to see that, the biblical sense of being an angel. Keith was surely such a person, not in perfection, but in terms of showing and giving the message of good news and sharing it with other people. Music is a gift. No state about it. It is a gift. Some of us possess it, possess it and some of us do not. And of course, sometimes persons who may possess the gift have to deal with those persons who may think that they have the gift, but they really do not have the gift. How often have we been, how often have we been and probably sat next to some person who thinks that they have the gift and they're singing to the top of their voices, the key's wrong, the lyrics are wrong, everything is wrong. And therefore, we still think, I can understand, but those persons who they really do have the gift, and it was stated by Keith Jr., they can have the ear that person really truly can be truly frustrated. But not so, I believe, with Keith. Even though, yes, he had that perfect ear, even though he had that gift, what really impressed me about Keith was his patience in terms of trying to bring other persons along who may not necessarily have the gift, but to bring it out in them. And therefore, even when persons wanted to believe that they were singing with a joyful noise, he was able to bring out the best in their particular offering to God. And that, I believe, was something that we should think about and give thanks to Almighty God. He never cussed. He never got on bad. But he was able to bring out the best and therefore, he was able to see and to be with persons who have a very high standards. We're able to utilize their talents. And therefore, with persons like, for example, Amanda Fields. He was able to be with that person. When she, Amanda Fields um, sings, she takes me to places. But he wasn't just content with that. He was also being there with the persons, maybe not as talented, persons in the Mother's Union, persons in the church army, was able to bring out the gift. Therefore, when the concert was there, they were able to make a joyful noise to the Lord. And I believe that that's something that we should think about. Because I believe, honestly, that while, yes, that God has given us gifts, and sometimes our gifts are standing out in, not in all, in, always in equal measure, really and truly, really and truly, a gift from God is only truly a gift if we can share that gift with others and if you can bring out the gifts and others. And I believe, therefore, for us, for some of us who may not have the gift at the high level, we know that we can appreciate, appreciate good music, good singing. And that, therefore, was a gift of Keith, not only his ability to bring out beautiful notes, to share those gifts in terms of his directorship. Therefore, persons were able to benefit from beautiful music, singing to the Lord. And therefore, there's an aspect, I believe, that was slightly mentioned, of being able to be ability to deal with persons with various abilities. Now, Keith was not only in terms of being involved in um, directing music, but for many years, as was stated, he was a Sunday school superintendent. And you would know that when you're a Sunday school superintendent, you have children, of varying degrees. You have children sometimes who are very up and more excited about being part of Sunday school, and those persons are a little more reluctant. And you have to work with all those persons to bring out the best. And I therefore think that Keith was able to bring that gift 
of trying to deal with all kinds of people and bring us together so we can make all a joyful noise, not only in terms of singing, but in ministry in general. And that's something, as I said, that we need to think about and give thanks to Almighty God. A mixed variety of talents, diversity, all for the glory of God. Now, I've been places when I've heard singing, taken places by beautiful sounds. But really, truly, what really touches me, when I said, when you hear different voices, not just a soloist, solos are good. Different voices, different instruments coming together. And I was thinking, therefore, of all the many, many of anthems and the programs, but one that really came out to me at time was when the choir came together with the police band and they sing Elizabeth, Elizabethan Serenade. Beautiful. And when they were coming together, such a beautiful blend of voices singing glory to God in the highest. This is wonderful, wonderful things that, of course, we are going to miss now that um, Keith is gone. But he's not left us in terms of being gone, but because I believe that he's left us with certain traits, certain experiences. He's passed on his gift to us. And he's done that by, first of all, recognizing that, yes, you do not compromise your standards. You always give of your best. You give of your best. And I've said this many times. There's an aspect of trying to be ready for a performance. But if it should be just about a performance, then it's really not going to be for the glory of God. There are persons, of course, who spend a lot of time in rehearsal and practice. And I've said before that we have the 10 Ps. In the 10 Ps, we have proper prior planning plus persistent practice prevents poor public performance. Proper prior planning plus persistent practice presents poor public performance. Very necessary, and Keith was a part of that. But it's not just, though, about a performance. I said about my father, I remember having a situation where he had to deal with a choir. And sometimes when choirs are having problems, you have to call them in. And he brought in this choir, and the people were very, you know, um, feeling very strong about their, their, their own talent, and very, uh, you know, self-satisfied about their own talent. And one person got up and said, well, Rector, we're here to sing. And my father said, no, 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 no. You're here to minister through song. There's a difference. You're here to minister through song. And that's what the aspect about Keith that really, really touched me. That yes, he could be there directing the choir as he was the director. He could be up here leading us in the singing. But it was not just at the big performances, but also as he gathered when there's not so many people for Evensong, for the canticles, and even for the time during the time of the, um, the, um, the morning prayer. He was saying, of course, we praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. And what will be now his final anthem as we leave the church today? It's an anthem, again, heard from the scriptures. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. And I hope and I pray that we will give thanks for Almighty God, to Almighty God, for the ministry of Keith Colonel Yard. But see it, see it, not as something just in the past, but for us now to carry on, to continue to give praises and thanks to Almighty God for all the blessings that we have received, and even the blessing of Keith himself. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty,
The hymn 197, The Lord is King, lift up thy voice. We pray for those who mourn for Keith and we commemorate the departed. Let's pray with confidence to God our Father who raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead for the salvation of all and grant Lord your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord in your mercy be close to those who mourn increase their faith in your undying love. Lord in your mercy May we strengthen our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy, show your mercy to the dying, strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, and them your will may be fulfilled, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saint in every age, pray may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our brother Keith, who was reborn by water and the Holy Spirit and Holy Baptism. Grant that his death will recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, to follow where you follow, where you led the way, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit for the ages of ages. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, your servant, with your saints. You only are immortal creator, maker of mankind. And we are mortal fallen of the earth, and the earth shall we return. For so is ordained, we created me, saying, You are dust, and thus you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and even the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. To the Lord's Prayer, our Father. To your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant, Keith. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arm of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, in the glorious company of the saints in light. Rest eternal bound to him, O Lord. Amen. 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 We now stand to sing the hymn 429, Who Will True Valor Sing? Christ henceforth to the Spirit, they may rest from their labors or they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. 
like a flowery blossom then withers, like a shadowy fleece and never stays. In the midst of life, you're in death. To whom can we turn to help but to you, Lord, to adjust the angered by our sins? You sure us the hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. You command to Almighty God, our brother, Keith, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ash to ashes, dust to dust. I beseech you, your infinite goodness, to give us grace to live in your dear love and die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again at judgment, both this, our brother Keith, and we ourselves be found set for your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And grant, O oh Lord, to all who bereave the spirit of faith and courage, and have the strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and the joyful expectation of eternal life of those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal ground to him, O Lord. Amen. And he and all the faithful departed of the mercy of God, rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord is counsel upon him and give him peace. Amen. believes in me, who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, will also give new life to all mortal bodies who is indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy in your right hand of pleasures forevermore. <laughs> 